Welcome to Weld.com. I'm Paul Brown, and today we're going to talk about the Lowly Spool Gun, which has come a long way over the years. Today we've got the Lincoln Magnum 250LX, and it is full of cool features and very easy to use. So let's get with some welding and talking about spool guns. Let's talk about why you'd want to use a spool gun instead of a TIG torch or a MIG gun. I mean, it's big, it's bulky. These guys are really lightweight. There's a bunch of reasons why you'd want to use a spool gun. One, it's got self-contained wire. That wire stays clean in there. It's inexpensive to replace. You got a 25 foot lead, which allows you to get far away from the machine or get around complex things like in a boat or a trailer or big frames or even structural things. With a MIG, you usually have a 15 foot lead, which is really stretching it trying to run aluminum wire through that long lead, even with a Teflon liner and U-groove rollers. Usually you'll end up with a bird's nest in your drive rolls and it'll take you five minutes to get that wad of wire out of there plus the wasted wire that you have. Now, as far as a TIG, you can get 25 feet away with that, but with two hands, you can get into tighter areas than you can with a torch, because with a torch, you're holding the torch and you're holding the filler and you can't get in there. Meg gun, you're gonna put it on the back shelf, because after it bird nests the first seven or eight times, in the first seven or eight starts, you're gonna be real frustrated with it. And believe me, I've tried welding with these and it is really, really difficult to do. Okay, now that we've decided to use the spool gun, let's load this little guy up. First thing that's real important is you wanna pull the contact tip out. Cause if you don't and the wire comes through there, it's liable to bind up and get into a big ball of wire called a bird's nest right here. So we wanna take our spool of wire and make sure you hang on to this wire because if you don't, it will take off and you will have the most incredible mess you've ever seen. On the back, there's a little tube that the wire goes through. Then the spool goes on to a round spindle the wire gets pushed through and goes into another little tube behind the roller. And now the drive roller is in contact with the motor and you can run the wire through. At this point, I'm gonna turn the machine on so I can electrically run it through. Machine's turned on. Wire feeds by itself, there you go. If I had left this contact tip on, it very likely could have crashed and caused a big bird nest back here of wire, which means you gotta cut all that out and start all over again. Make sure you snug down the contact tip. You don't need to be crazy with it. Screw on your nozzle. Clip your wire, put on the cover. There is a anti-backlash gizmo here that you have to set on there. Covers on, screw the cover down, close the door. You're ready to start welding. Spool guns usually start instantaneous when you hit it. They're great. You got a pound of wire in there, that's enough to weld for half an hour straight at least. If you've got a long run to do, we're talking two, three, four feet, you don't have to stop like you would with a TIG torch because the TIG torch, you're constantly feeding in from a 36 inch rod and that rod goes fast because of the amount of metal that aluminum takes. No one ever explains two-step and four-step. 
So I want to do that. Okay, I'm going to put the trigger on two-step, which means if I pull the trigger and hold it, the wire will feed. As soon as I let go of the trigger, it cuts off. If it were on four-step, I would push the trigger, the wire would feed when I let off, and then when I want it to stop, i got to push the trigger again and let off. If I'm doing a long run, that's really helpful. Okay, we have a spot time, which we're not going to use. We have a run-in time that gives us a short run-in of the wire, so it just doesn't start from a dead stop. And we have a burn back, which allows the electricity to run through the wire after we've let off the trigger, so we don't have a big piece of wire hanging off the end. Now, what we want to do is set our volts, and I figured a good setting is 22 volts. Got that set. To set the wire speed, when we're using a spool gun, we've got a little knob here that we can change it just like that by turning it, which is real handy when you're 25 feet away from the, the welder. You don't have to keep coming back to the machine, and you can make minor adjustments on the fly with just that little tiny knob there. Very handy. One of the greatest advantages is the speed that you can put material down. You can feed 500 inches a minute, 045 aluminum wire. That's a lot of metal getting put down. And you don't have to stop to get another rod and then relight and reheat what you're welding on. So we can say it's faster than TIG. What percentage? 10, 20, 30%? Well, let's go ahead and show you how fast it really is. Now, some of the disadvantages of this, we talked about before, it's big and bulky. You get used to it. It's become second nature holding it. And the fact that you've got a grip on it, you can hold the nozzle, you can get very precise with it. It's not going to give you the stack of dimes like a TIG will, but doing that with a TIG takes one heck of a lot of practice to, to get to that level. And if you really want the stack of dimes, you can lay it down with a spool gun, come back with a TIG on top of it, and get those little scalloped look to it. The other disadvantage of the spool gun is it's more difficult to weld on thin material. We're talking about 16 gauge or 1 16th inch thick, because the mode of transfer is not short circuit like you'd get with steel. It's axial spray transfer where the wire does not hit the puddle and short out and then add filler to it. It's basically spraying out like a garden hose. So anything less than an eighth of an inch is kind of difficult to weld. But by doing what's called a bump weld, where you just bump the trigger and hit it, you can build the weld material up. So if you're doing thin stuff, go to your TIG. Now, the amount of heat that this puts into your material is a lot greater than the TIG torch because of the arc cone being so small. You can weld on much thicker material with a lot less amperage. So for the spool of wire, you saw me load into the Lincoln Magnum 250LX. It's Lincoln Super Glaze, 4043.030 diameter with an AWS spec of A5.10. Okay, I started out with 350 inches a minute at about 22 volts. And when I did that, it was way too cold for this one inch material. So I bumped it up to 450 inches a minute at 25 volts and it burned really nice, penetrated well, wet it out. So this being one inch is a major heat sink. To do that with TIG, you'd be probably running at 450 amps and having to use helium and argon together. That's where 
the spool gun really shines is doing this thick material like this. Where a TIG torch is maybe 30% positive cleaning action, 70% penetration, the spool gun is 100% positive cleaning action, which blows the aluminum oxide off with the electrons leaving the material. That's very important because that aluminum oxide or dross leaves little black pepper-like stuff and those are hard spots which reduce the ductility of the material and actually can keep the well pool from sticking to the base metal. So that's what's great about this, 100% cleaning action. So if you're working on something like an engine, a car body, boat, places you can't get to to make it spotless clean that you need for the TIG gun, this is the machine to do it with. I mean, I've worked on a lot of boats. They're always corroded. They have paint on them. You can't, it's difficult to get the paint off and clean. I gave up after hours and hours of trying to TIG, and once I got a hold of a spool gun, that was the only way to do it. We're gonna run another bead or two beads on this just to build it up even more and see how well we can do with that. Let's look at this weld. I did not clean it after the first pass and it still had all that soot, but because it's 100% electrode positive, it blew all that stuff off. This is three more passes that were laid down on there and it looked beautiful. And it is really hot because that's one inch thick. Okay, we did a little etch on it. So you can see how thick a material you can weld with a spool gun. We ran about 425 inches a minute at 25 volts with our Lincoln Magnum 250LX. Trying to do that much weld with a TIG torch would be incredibly hard to do, you know, well over 300 amps or more. Thanks for watching today. See you on the next one.